Hey everyone, my name is Riley, and this video is a step-by-step -step Reich tutorial. Reich is one of the best project management tools on the entire market right now, and in this video, I will be guiding you through absolutely everything that you need to know about the Reich software. Now, the first thing that we need to do is, of course, sign up for Reich. If you do not yet have a Reich account and you would like to claim a free trial, you can do so using the first link down in the description. Once you have clicked on that link in the description, that is going to take you over to this screen. Now, to claim your free Reich trial, all we have to do is click on Try Reich for free in this top corner, and then we can go ahead and enter an email. Once that is entered, just click on Try Reich for free, and this is now going to ask us to create an account. So we can enter in a name right here, then enter in a company name as well, click on I agree, and then go to the next step. Now in here, it's going to ask what team or department you are, and I would recommend skipping all of this because we want to set Reich up. We just want this blank. We don't want anything added for us because this just adds extra confusion that we don't need. So we want Reich to be completely blank. So we just want to go along and skip all of this. And this is now going to prepare the workspace. So we can click on get started. And this right here is going to take us over to Reich. So this right here is the main right dashboard and the way that I'm going to be showing you how this works is I'm going to be creating this as if I have a marketing agency. So what I'm going to do is just delete all of these pre-existing tasks that have been added by default. I don't need any of these and I want this all blank. So now this is blank, I can now go ahead and start creating different projects. As this is an agency, one of the main things that I want to have for my agency that I want to plan out is customer acquisition and actually getting clients. So that's what I'm going to create right here in first project. I'm going to go up to the top and in this section, I'm going to rename this to sales and client acquisition. Over here on the left hand side, this is automatically going to update to sales and client acquisition. And then in here, I can go ahead and add tasks. So the first task that I might want to add in here is to rebuild the sales funnel. So I can add this right there. And as you can see, we now have this task, which is rebuild sales funnel. Then I might want to add in a second task. And in here, this can be create new ad campaigns. And just like that, I now have these two tasks of rebuild sales funnel and create new ad campaigns. So my team can now come into sales and client acquisition and they can see exactly what I want doing. Now rebuild sales funnel is extremely broad and extremely general and this doesn't really give my team much detail in exactly what I want them to do. So what I can now do is go to this more section and click on add sub item to give them even more information. So under rebuild sales funnel, I can now plan out different steps and different tasks within Rebuild Sales Funnel to tell my team exactly what I need them to do. So the first step might be to create a new video sales letter. I can then click enter and that is now going to be a task within Rebuild Sales Funnel. Now for the next subtask after that is complete, maybe I want to go ahead and get client testimonials so I can add this in. Then I can say build two sales funnels using ClickFunnels. And if you're unaware, then ClickFunnels is just a funnel building software. Then split test funnels using ads and then set winner as main sales funnel. So now my team can come in and we can collapse and expand this at any time. So we now have rebuild sales funnel. Then my team and myself can come in here, drop this down and see each individual task that is within this rebuild sales funnel. Now, looking at this, maybe I want to get client testimonials before I build out the VSL. So this is super easy. We can just click on these dots on the left hand side and then drag and reorder this wherever I want this to be. So I can now drag get client testimonials above create new VSL. And that is going to be dropped right there. I can do the exact same thing for create new ad campaigns. So once again, I can go in, add sub item and then create sub items under create new ad campaigns. So I just went ahead and created all of these different subcategories. And then once again, we can collapse and expand each of these menus 
to see the different subcategories under this main category. Next, I can go to the assignee and set specific assignees for each of these tasks. If I click into the assignee area, this is going to bring up all of the different team members that I have. So for example, I can assign Dave to this specific task right here, and that is going to set Dave as the assignee. Then I can come down to the second one and set Samantha to this specific task right here. And now each of these people have been set these tasks. What I can also do is click on this drop down menu to open up all of these subtasks and then set specific assignees to each of these tasks. So in this example, maybe I want to set Samantha to create the 10 video ad creatives. However, I want Dave to create the photo ad. So I can add Dave in here. And then if I go back up to the top, I now want to change this so that both Dave and Samantha are assigned to this. And then once again, I can go down here and choose who is assigned to each of these tasks. Next, we can move on to status. We have new, planned, in progress, review and completed. And we can also go to edit workflow right here and change all of these tasks. So if I wanted to add a new status right here and say testing and set this to maybe like a yellow color, I'll change this review to purple. You can see that testing has now been created. So I can now go and save these changes and then me and each of my team members can click into this task workflow and let everybody know how this task is getting up. We can also do the same for these individual sections. So what we can do is go to the main rebuild sales funnel and maybe set this to in progress. Then get client testimonials. We can say is completed. Create new VSL, completed. Then build two sales funnels using click funnels. I can set this to in progress. And then these other two to plant. This is now going to show everybody in the team where each of these individual tasks are in terms of status, if they are complete and everything like that. We can also set due dates over here. So today is currently the 7th of February. Maybe I want to say that Dave has the rest of the month to do this. So this is due by the end of the month and that is now set as the due date. We can also set due dates of course for each of these individual subtasks right here. So maybe we can say this is due by the 9th, this is due by the 16th, this is due by the 20th, then the 23rd, and then the 29th. Now all of these individual subtasks also have due dates and the overall due date is set right here at the top. We can also add any files or anything in here relating to the task that is going to help. So maybe we want to add images or files or videos. You can add this all right here. We can add YouTube links, website links, or you can just upload regular files from your computer. We can then go to this plus section and add in different columns along here. Now we have a few different options. We can add in a start date. So if I check this, we can now see I have start date right here and I can choose the start date of the task. Now, it doesn't really make sense to have the due date before the start date. So to move these around, we just have to click and drag, and then we can drag these to any of these sections. So let's say this was started on the 1st of February, and Dave now has the entire month to complete this task. We can also add new sections in right here once again, like the author, importance. So let's go to importance, set this one to maybe high, and then this one to low and we can set the importance of these tasks right here. Once again, for all of these, we can click down, move into the subcategories right here and set importance, start date, and any of these we can also do for these drop-down menus. We can also sort this table by these different sections at the top. For example, right now, this is sorted by priority, but we can choose from any of these options. If I choose name, we can see this is now going to be sorted alphabetically and the C is of course going to show up before R. We have all of these different options that we can choose from right here. We can also sort by all tasks, all active tasks and my active tasks. We can sort by group, status and all of these different options right here. We can also change the view of this. So right now we are in table. Let's go ahead and flick this to board and we now have a Kanban view 
which shows us all the statuses and where each task is in relation to status. So with Dave right here, let's say he has finished rebuilding this sales funnel. He can flick along to the board and then go ahead and move this to completed over here. And just like that, this task is complete. Then Samantha could come along and she can once again move throughout all of these different sections to move this along and show the entire team where this all is. Now, this is just a different view. We can, of course, go back to table and update the status manually using this section right here. This is just a secondary view, but it does really help, especially when you have a lot of different tasks. You start potentially having 50 to 100 tasks. This can be super helpful just to see the progress of everything at a glance. We then have the Gantt chart view as well, which kind of looks like a spreadsheet. I don't really like this the most, but once again, you can see all of the data is built in right here. We can double click into any of these options right here. And once again, change the status, add a due date, a start date, and all of this. And then we also have analytics and calendar that are currently hidden. Let's click into calendar though right here. And this is going to show us an entire calendar of how everything is set out. So we set the rebuild sales funnel. If we go back to the entire month of February. So from the 1st to the 29th, and we can see this in the calendar rebuild sales funnel is going the whole month. We then have on the 9th, for example, get client testimonials. And these are all built in because this is the data we inputted into the table. But we can go to the calendar and add individual tasks right here. So I can click on the 14th, create a new task. This may be team meeting. Let's say we have a team meeting every Wednesday. We can add this in right here into the calendar section. And apparently I can't spell but we can go ahead and add this in every single Wednesday. And if we go back to the table, we can see the team meeting is going to be added in right there. Now this can really mess with the view of the table and also the board. So I wouldn't really recommend using the calendar view too much, especially to plan in team meetings. And you are better off just using Google Calendar or whatever calendar software your team are using. I wouldn't switch over to using the calendar system on Rike, but that is just me personally. So let's just go ahead and delete these right here. There's no reason to really have these. So we can right click and just delete these and set everything back to how it was. Now, something else I am going to show you is right now I am in my main account as the team leader. But if I switch over here, I am now in Dave's account. We can clearly see I am in Dave's account. Once again, we can see the exact same menu right here, this exact same dashboard with the board and everything like that. The reason that I wanted to log into Dave's account though is to show you this section right here. So right now, this is quite noisy. Dave can see everything, everything that's assigned to Samantha and all of the other team members on your team. So right now, this wouldn't be the worst for Dave because we have a very small team, but especially if you start adding 10 to 20 team members, this can be very, very noisy and Dave can be pretty confused clicking through all of this. So to make this much easier, Dave can go to assigned to me and he can specifically see everything that is assigned to him. Now the rebuild sales funnel is completed, so that's why it doesn't show up. But if I just go back through and set this all to in progress, then we'll do the same for all of these, just so I can show you how this looks. And now all of these are no longer completed. If I go back over to assigned to me, all of Dave's tasks are going to show up right here, the task, the current status and the due date. So Dave can see everything that he needs to do. This is why it's super important to set due dates for each of your tasks so that Dave can prioritize all of these different areas and do the task that correlates to the nearest due date. Dave also has an inbox up here where he can come along and see everything that is going on at the company. So Dave can see that I recently changed this to high importance. I assigned him different tasks down here and this is his inbox area. So that is how things are going to look on your employees and different team members accounts. Now let's switch back over to the main account right here. So I am now logged back in to the main team leader and my own account. What we can also do is right now we have sales and client acquisition, but we can also add in a new project. And let's say right here that this is client ad campaigns. 
we want a different section for this. And then once again, we can do the exact same thing, add in different tasks. So we can say run ads for pet shop clients. And then once again, we can create these different sub items, the exact same thing that we did for sales and client acquisition. But this just allows us to create different boards so that everything is a lot less confusing. And we can clearly see this is sales and client acquisition. This is client ad campaigns. And then we can create different projects and follow this exact same structure. So that is the main bulk of the tutorial out of the way. Next, I just want to show you some back end settings, how you can invite different team members to your team and everything like that. So the way that we do this is by clicking on this plus icon in the top right corner. In here, we can create tasks. We can also create new spaces and we can also create different requests or invite people to our team. So I'm going to click on invite. And in here, I can enter in the email address of the person that I want to invite. We can then add a message if we want to, and also choose the user type. So obviously admins have the most permissions, then regular users, then collaborators. And then all you have to do is click send invite. Once that is sent, your team member will then get an email that looks like this, that says you have invited them to the space. So all they have to do is click accept invite, set up their Rike account, and then once that is set up, they will automatically be added to your team. Next, let's go into the backend settings. So we can click on your profile icon up here, then we can go into settings. And in here, this is where you can add a profile picture, change your name, company, country of res residence, your time and regional settings, and basically everything that you need on the backend can be set here. Under work schedule, this is where you can choose the days that you work and non-working days. So if you have any vacations that are planned out, you can set them all up here. Under email preferences, this is where we can go ahead and choose what kind of notifications that you get sent to your email. So right now we can see when somebody mentions me, when somebody assigns the task, these are going to be sent to my email, but this one is not because it's not checked. So you can go through here and really customize this, choose what notifications you want to and not want to get sent to your email. Now, the final thing that I want to show you is different integrations that you can add to Rike. So once again, we can click on this profile icon, then go down to apps and integrations. And this is where you can add any apps or integrations that you want to add into Rike. So once this loads up, we can see all of the apps and the integrations that we can add here. There's a lot of these, so it's probably not worth scrolling through this menu. Instead, you can go up to the search bar and search for the specific integration you are looking for. For example, if I want to integrate MailChimp, I can add this up here, MailChimp automation, MailChimp via Rike integrate, and we can add any of these integrations right here. We could also do the same with maybe uh, Asana, if this is what we use. We can then click on Asana right here and then go ahead and integrate this with Rike so that you have all of the tools that you use in your business integrated with Rike. So that is my step-by-step -step Rike tutorial. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, take it easy.